In this video, I'll show you how to install ArcOS on the RG353P. Let's jump right in. We first want to grab ArcOS from the download page. The link will be in the description. There's not an official release for the 353P, so we're going to grab the files for the 353M, as they'll also work on the P. There's a G drive or a mega link. You can choose whichever one you like. I'm going to be using the Google link. While that's downloading, we need three other programs on our computer, or at least equivalents. 7-Zip to unzip the image, Win32 Disk Imager to write it, and then SD card formatter if you're going to be reusing an SD card. Here's the SD card options you have with the 353 series. You can go with a single card with the operating system and the ROMs on the same card. I would recommend a name brand card in a minimum of 64 gigabytes. Now the pro of this configuration is you only have to buy one card. The con is that if you ever need to reinstall the operating system, you're going to wipe out your ROMs partition and collection as well. So for that reason, I recommend the dual SD card setup with the operating system on the first card and the ROMs on the second card. Now yes, you will need two cards for this setup, but the nice thing is, is that if you ever need to reinstall the operating system, you're only going to touch the first card and you won't have to recreate the second card with all your ROMs. Before writing our card, let's go ahead and unzip our download. We'll use 7-zip and just extract the image file straight to your desktop or anywhere else that's convenient. Next, we'll use SD card formatter to format our card. If you're using a new card, you can skip this step. I'm reusing an old one, so I'll go ahead and format the card. Just be sure you select the correct drive letter, otherwise you might lose some data. Now I'll open Win32 Disk Imager, and again make sure you're writing to the correct drive letter so you don't lose any data. I'll click this folder icon, then navigate to the location of the ArcOS image file, select it, then click Write, and Yes. This takes a couple minutes, so I'm going to fast forward through. After it's finished, we can close these prompts and then we'll eject the SD card and connect it to the 353P. With the SD card connected, if we power on, we will get the ArcOS splash screen. And then shortly after that, we'll get another message that the XFAT partition needs to be expanded. And then not long after that, you're gonna get a wall of text as uh, it goes through and uh, makes the necessary file changes. The whole process takes a few minutes, so just be patient with it. Here's what ArcOS looks like once it's loaded. And now if we're going to use a second SD card, we'll want to go ahead and grab it and put it in the second SD card slot. I also need to mention that the second SD card needs to be formatted into one of these formats specified on the ArcOS wiki. I would recommend that you choose XFAT. Then go to the Options menu, select Advanced, and then scroll down and select Switch to SD2 for ROMs. This will set up all the necessary folders on your second SD card. After it's finished, we can press Start, then navigate to Quit and Shut Down System. At this point, if you're using just one SD card, you can remove SD card 1. If you're using a dual SD card setup, remove SD card 2. If you're on a single SD card setup, you're going to find all your ROM folders in this Easy ROMs partition on the SD card. If you only see this boot partition and you don't see the Easy ROMs partition, then very likely Windows did not assign a drive letter to the ROMs partition. So here's how we fix that. Open Windows Disk Management. Find the Easy ROMs partition, right click it, and then change the drive letter. Simply add a new drive letter, and when we go back into File Explorer and refresh, you should be able to see the Easy ROMs partition. On a two SD card setup, the ROMs partition on SD card 2 will look exactly the same as it does on SD card 1. However, I like to rename my SD card 2 partition just so it's easier to identify when it's connected to my computer. The first thing we want to add to the ROMs partition is BIOS files. 
Now because of copyright law, I cannot tell you exactly where to find BIOS files. You might be able to copy them from the stock SD card that Ambernick supplies with the 353, or you could search the web. I already have my own collection that I've used previously, so I'm just going to copy it over to the BIOS folder. Now we can start moving our ROMs files over to the ROMs partition. There's a folder for each console that ArcOS will play. And if you're having trouble identifying the folders, you can look at the ArcOS wiki for help. I'll put a description in the link below. But it's pretty easy to identify which folders your ROM should go in. For instance, if I wanted to add Super Nintendo ROMs, I would go into the SNES folder. I'll go ahead and move some of mine over. If I wanted to add Game Boy games, you can see there's a folder for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. So it becomes pretty straightforward once you get familiar with this folder structure. Go ahead and finish moving the rest of your ROMs over, after which we'll disconnect our SD card and put it back in the 353. So now within ArcOS we can see the menu listings for all the systems we added. Let's go ahead and jump into one of the games here and see what it looks like. This game is still awesome. Now let me show you how to get box art for your games. We want to go to the options menu and we're going to go into advanced. We need to turn the Wi-Fi connection on. Once you're back in ArcOS, go back into the options menu and then all the way down to Wi-Fi. Select connect to a new Wi-Fi connection and then select your Wi-Fi network and put in your network password. When you're finished you can select the check mark and then exit out of the program. Now from the main menu hit start, go down to scraper. We'll use screen scraper as our scraping source. You're going to need a username and password so you can visit the site to get one. After you've entered your username and password, go ahead and change the image source to Box2D. You want Box Source to None, Logo Source to None, and then turn off Scrape Videos. This way we'll be grabbing just the box art. Now go to Scrape Now. And I like to scrape just a few systems at a time, so I'll go to Select None. and. I'm just going to grab the Super NES just for demonstration purposes and once I'm done I'll go down to start and it will take some time so just give it a few minutes it might be a good time to grab something to eat. After it's finished we can jump back into the Super NES menu and see that beautiful box art. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Until next time, happy gaming my friends.